dialogues where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chan, and today we are chatting with... Uh, I'm Ben Plowman. Hello, Ben. Hello, Chuki. Where are you based, and what do you do? Uh, I'm based in San Francisco, and I am a mobile engineer. So that means I do a little bit of iOS and a little bit of Android and then some server stuff on top of it. Yeah, Ben does everything. Um, so I actually work with Ben. I only do the Android part. So basically, I, like, I, I work with one third of Ben pretty much. <laughs> uh, so usually on this channel, we ask people how you get started on Android. But since you do three things, maybe you can give me a really short summary of like how do you get your hands on all these like, three different um, technologies. Sure. So what usually happens is that I'm at a company and they want to do something in Android and they don't have anyone who knows how to do Android. And they're mm -hmm. like, hey, Ben, do you want to do this? I'm like, I'd love to do that. <laughs> and so uh, that happened uh, a couple different times for mm -hmm. Android and iOS. And now I do a lot of a little bit. I do uh, uh -huh. spread everything. But w which one did you start with? So, well, web or iOS or Android? Uh, I definitely started like with web, uh -huh. but like forever and ever go. Like oh, okay. Fifth grade, front page of the <laughs> <laughs> Fifth grade, okay. Yeah. But that time, was not like though. proper programming. That's like, you know. That's like copy view pasting, source and JavaScript. Want, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the beauty of the web, right? You can't like view source on Android and learn that way. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. So you start with web and then. And then I did uh, like four years ago, roughly, uh, started with Android. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then only this last year or so, I've done more iOS stuff. Interesting. How, how does it. How, how, does, how does your day-to-day -day go? Like, do you switch between iOS and Android all the time, or you mostly stay with one for like a month and then do the other one? Uh, yeah, so usually it's some switching like every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I usually have like multiple IDEs open so I can quickly go between them. Wow, um, your, your, your machine is beefy. I, I, mine can <laughs> barely handle Android Studio. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty good. The, the one nice thing, so justification for 16 gigs of RAM or whatever it takes to Toys. run all the stuff, yeah. Right. Uh, and like, okay, I have to drop the big bomb like in the beginning. <laughs> iOS, Android, like how did they compare to each other? Um, it's interesting, like uh, I come mostly from like a, like a background where I knew more about Android. Mm -hmm. And so learning iOS was a lot easier than I expected. Okay. Um, like the main hard part is that Objective-C is like a really old language. Um, and so the way that they do a lot of stuff, even like function calls and stuff, is sort of syntactically strange compared to like a Java. But conceptually, you're familiar with Right, but conceptually, it's, it's like pretty, pretty much similar. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how they compare, I think uh, on almost every front, I would say that like Android is probably like an easier platform to work with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, cool. yeah, so good news for Android developers. Is that, well, I think... One of the things that I heard people hear, um, I don't have a lot of experience in iOS, is um, handling background tasks is much easier in iOS. Uh, you just make some closure or whatever that thing mm -hmm. is called. Like you pass a function on and then it runs and then it just comes back. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you can expand <laughs> sure. on that a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, so handling, I feel like, yeah, iOS is a little bit better at like the default uh, behavior for how you run stuff in the background of the foreground mm -hmm. is sort of, uh, I don't know, like simpler. Like okay. you don't have to learn like what a thread execution so tool how, how, how or anything like that is. So how does it go in, in iOS? I just kind of so, want to understand yeah. what makes it easier. In iOS, basically, there's a like a, a function, like a dispatch function that okay. you can, like is globally accessible. And you say dispatch on like, and you give it a, uh, like a thread name, either like the main thread or a background thread. And then you give it a closure, and then okay. it runs that closure on the thread. Um, then that will just go into the background. Right. And then do you get a call back when it's done? Um, or it just runs off in the background, <laughs> and then you don't know what happened to it? Uh, I think it's, yeah, mostly runs in the background. Like, I'm sure you can set it up so that it does something else when it's done, or calls something on another thread, so you actually get a notification. Okay. Um, and is that how you will handle, like, a, well, the classic... REST API call. Like if you need to fetch something from an, a REST API and then display something on the screen, like how, how, does, how is that structured in iOS? Uh, yeah, so it's structured roughly like that, mm -hmm. where you like make a, some sort of like NS URL request, okay. and then you can dispatch that on a background thread mm -hmm. and then do, like do the callback on the main thread or however you want to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, so conceptually, it's very similar to how you would do it in, in Android, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And like, is there one thing that 
Well, I guess I should ask the question both ways. Yeah. But is that one thing that from iOS that you really wish that I, uh, Android has? And also in reverse, is that one thing yeah. that you really want from <laughs> Android that you can transplant into iOS? Sure. So I think the, the thing from iOS that Android could definitely learn from is mm -hmm. that the the iOS uh, like simulator plus like compiler is a lot uh, right. speedier. Right. Uh, like the default Android emulator uses like 400% of your CPU at all times. <laughs> and like yeah. your machine starts to heat up and stuff. It's right. pretty awful. Mm -hmm. um, you can improve a lot if you use something like Jmotion or if you use like a, like a virtual device right. that uh, is x86, then there's less like, uh, right. I don't know, like translation between like... Uh, there's less to like, emulate, like, right? Because sure. you're pretending to be an ARM machine. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Whereas like on iOS, like their simulator is what they call your emulator is like uh, x86 native. And so right. it runs like super fast. It doesn't use very much of your CPU. Um, and the compiler is also super speedy. It's like, I don't know, like five second roughly like build times for a lot of stuff. <laughs> So, I'm jealous. So these are, I mean, these are both things that Android is trying to improve on. Like yeah. Two point oh. Exactly. It seems like they're trying to do like a, like a faster build. The instant reset. run. Yeah. yeah. Which so. I've tried to make work, but I haven't been able to make uh, work. Yet. I didn't have time to try that. Yeah. <laughs> I was very excited about. it. I was excited too. Cause yeah. And I actually heard about the simulator on iOS being so fast that yeah. people were warned to make sure that they oh, touch on real device. Yeah, that's like a definitely a problem that I've seen before too. Yeah. Is that if you only look at it on your computer, it's like. It's using your like laptop CPU, and right. so like on the actual device, it could be way slower. Which has got the reverse of Android. I feel <laughs> exactly. like exactly. It's, it's usually it's like, like if you, you do the emulator, and it's so slow, and then you go to the device, like, oh okay. Yeah. You um, feel really bad about how slow your code is, and then you try it on the phone, and you're like, oh, this oh, is that's actually totally not that fine. bad. Yeah. yeah. So iOS is the reverse problem. Sure. How about the other way? Uh, um, what, so what's I good in Android that you thought? So uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that's really great in Android, mm -hmm. um, like the open source piece. I think is like. A real strength, like the ability to actually like look at what's going on, or like click through and see like how stuff is like how it works, how it's right. documented, that kind of stuff. Android definitely is way better. Um, and actually, they have pretty good in, uh, integration within Android Studio, so you can navigate your code and the system code kind of in the same manner, exactly. and that's really nice. Yeah. yeah, so that's like a lot better. Like with iOS, basically, you get like header files and mm -hmm. maybe some comments. Right. And then you can go find it in the docs if you really are curious. But a lot of it's black box. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a small thing. Um, much bigger, though, is that Xcode, which is like the default IDE for iOS, is like truly, truly awful. <laughs> so, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so and uh, I thought maybe it was just me. But then I talked right. to people who are like really big, like Apple enthusiasts uh, right. who have been doing iOS forever. And they're like, oh, yeah, Xcode's awful. Like everyone knows it's awful. Like there's nothing you can do. Uh -huh. I thought there's something called app code or something. That's yeah. an alternative ID that you can yeah. use. So I do use like app code a little bit. Okay. But it's also the case that because some things require like a like a WYSIWYG editor, like interface builder, <laughs> in order to build. I hate interface builder. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. So there's some there's like a you know the twenty percent of stuff that you have to do on iOS that app code can't do. Right. Or can't yet do. Um, so is it still like that? I, I mean, I tried iOS maybe two, three years ago. Right. That there is this, I don't know why it's there, but there's a project file mm -hmm. that is in some format that is not human parsable. And like, you need to check it in, and then your team may check it out, and then do stuff to it, and then like just the whole uh, world just breaks. Uh, uh, is it still like that? Yeah, that's like another problem. And I sort of like lump that in with like problems with, with, I, with Xcode. Xcode. Right. It's not like properly Xcode's fault, but. Uh, but yeah, the, the I feel like the team dynamic is a little bit unclear like when you use Xcode. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like every time like two people make a large change, mm -hmm. there's like the merge problem of like the actual code stuff, and then there's also the merge problem of um, like the project file, which is basically just a JSON list of all of the files and where they are and how to like link them together. But yeah, they have like mysterious IDs that is not stable. Exactly. It's like they have like a hash of like the files included. Oh. So it's like, yeah, very hard to tell right. in I, a diff like what you're supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, for me, it's a mystery. It's like how do people at Apple even work with each other? Right. right. <laughs> like, so, what do they do? So, um, uh, so it's getting like slightly better. Okay. For example, uh, like the way this problem is solved in Android is mm -hmm. like, like with a build system, like Gradle does all of the like linking and project description for the most part. Right. Um, and Which is human readable. Right, and so iOS has like a like something similar uh, like CocoaPods, 
oh. like helps you manage your libraries. Um, but since you can't like use it for everything, you can only use it for like external stuff. Okay. Uh, you still have like the project. Like, like if you want to include a framework from right. whatever so those that, things are called. So long ago, I don't remember, but I do remember. Sure. That's a, for me, the problem with Xcode is that fair amount of clicking and dragging and dropping. And it's just, yeah. like, it's hard to, <laughs> like, it's hard to share that within a team. Sure. It's like, go here and like, click this and add this. Um, so that was also, I, I struggled a lot with it. Yeah. Point. How so? And it's, uh, I mean, I think the interface builder stuff is very similar to Android and Except in Android, you can skip and go straight to XML. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. Like the, the, the export format in Android is human readable. Like the XML, right. you can actually look at and understand. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely not the case in iOS. Yeah. Um, so personally, I prefer just writing like out things in Objective C. Yeah, that's what I heard. People just like forget about this. Right. Like, uh, yeah. And then you yeah, into, sort of describe the, the interface stuff. Like, do you use auto layout though? Um, we do a little bit of auto layout stuff. Uh, a little bit of like layout constraint stuff. Okay. Um, like you didn't have to for a long time, and then right. now all of a sudden, like it's like way more required. More devices! Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have, yeah. I mean, I am very happy actually when iOS came out with more devices because a lot of the times when I work with designers, they want to spec things down to like pixel by pixel. Oh, yeah. As in like XY coordinates, and like, well, it's not like that <laughs> in Android, and they don't yeah. understand why, and then. Once we have the long skinny iPhone 5 came out, like, now you know why it's skinny iPhone 5. Yeah, it is nice. So for me, it's, it's kind of like, that makes it, I mean, like, it's not difficult. I just feel like it's a mindset. Like once mm -hmm. you're aware of the issues, right. then it's, it's, you, can, you can declare things in a different way. So I'm actually pretty excited. Cool. Uh, so what would be your recommendation? Say like one day, you know, one of our viewers say, hey, you know, I've done this Android thing and I want to try to write something for iOS. Like, how would you uh, uh, recommend them approach that? Like how would, what is a, a good way to learn as an iOS, I mean, as an Android developer, right? Mm -hmm. Because you already have some foundation. Right. Um, the easiest way to get into, I think, like any new platform mm -hmm. is definitely just to like choose a project that you care about, that you want to finish, that's not like too impossible. Right. And then start like, whatever, try to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and a surprising amount of stuff like exists in both worlds. Oh, it's okay. like there's like an equivalent of like a list view and there's an equivalent of like UI a table view. an activity. Oh no, it's a UI collection view now. Uh, I guess it's a new one. Yeah, new -ish. UI I table mean, view is like the list it's view. It's iOS 6, I mean, it's not that new. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a lot of it is like there's like a, you know, like an activity becomes like a view controller and stuff right. like that. So is, it, is someone write something that does the parallel so that I can just look it up and say, oh, I need to, <laughs> I need to deal with a, uh, um, a view pager and then I can just look it up what is it called in iOS. Yeah, I bet there's a translation somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because I think that would be very useful. I mean, that's exactly how I felt when I learned. Yeah. Uh, when I said, oh, this UI con yeah, view controller, that's just uh, activity. I got that. <laughs> that again was a little bit trickier. I feel like the mapping wasn't as clear. Yeah. And, and I mean, like, iOS also has its own concepts of, um, I forgot what they're called, components, composite or something that you can add. Like if, like if you have a building class like string, you can actually add new functions to it. Uh, which is super fun, and I haven't oh, done yeah. any like swizzling or any like fancy stuff like that. That's yeah. pretty basic stuff. Yeah, so. there are some nice things about like the Objective C language. Right, like what you're describing is like a category. Oh, category! So. It starts with C. I knew it starts with C. Okay, <laughs> so, category. So yeah, the cool thing about a category is you can change like a default, like a standard library class. So right. If you wanted to add something to string, mm -hmm. so you could have like quote, you know, to title case or <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of like adds on to the existing functionality in it, like a fun way. Cool, so basically if anyone wants to learn iOS, you will recommend them come up with a project and jump right in to Objective-C or Swift? Which one would you think is <laughs> So a... it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, there's think... probably more tutorials on Objective-C. Yeah, that's like part time. of it. There's like yeah. a lot of like built up knowledge about Objective-C, but mm -hmm. I think Swift is definitely like a, an easier language to understand if you come from like, whatever, a Java, JavaScript, whatever oh, okay. background. It's yeah. like the syntax is much more Familiar. To. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. Of course. Thanks and for having me. And if people want to find you on the internet, what's, <laughs> where's the best way? So I'm on Twitter at Ben Plowman. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, add it to the banner. <laughs> All right then. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.